Thank you so much and welcome to those of you who are joining our meeting right now. Uh, we will begin shortly. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who has joined us so far this evening. We will begin very shortly. Thank you. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us this evening for the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District's uh, first meeting about the Lower Shaker Lake Dam Reconstruction Project. My name is Jen Altine. I am here in the Administration and External Affairs Department of the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District and I am your MC for this evening's program. Just to clear up a little bit of housekeeping things up front, um, as far as tonight's meeting is concerned, we're here really to just introduce the project. We're beginning the pre-design portion of this project. So it's really to introduce the project and give you an opportunity to, to learn what we, have, uh, what we have planned over the next uh, two plus years of design. This webinar is being recorded. So if you would like to watch it later, share it with a friend, the recording will be posted uh, probably tomorrow morning and it will be uploaded to NEO rsd.org slash lower lake. And that's the landing page where you can find everything associated with this specific project. If you have any questions this evening, as the webinar progresses, there is a Q&A function here in Zoom. It should be at the bottom of your screen. It looks like two talk bubbles. If you ask a question um, using, um, using that tool, it will come to me and the other panelists will see it. And we can do one of two things. I can either answer it in the, um, in the Q&A um, app itself, which will then post the question and answer for everyone here to see, or we can choose to answer it live. Um, if you do have, if you are watching this and it's recorded, or you don't feel comfortable posting a question in the Q&A function, you can always email our customer service department. Their email address is askus at neorsd.org, and they will route your question to the appropriate person and get back to you promptly. Um, as far as tonight's meeting is concerned, um, we're here to talk about the Lower Shaker Lake Dam Reconstruction Project. If you have any questions about a stormwater project in your neighborhood or a question about your bill, anything like that, please use the ask us at neorc.org function as um, they'll be able to, to help you best using that feature. Also, if you'd like to learn more about this, uh, this project, we will be out at Lower Shaker Lake this coming Saturday, October 7th. We will be at the Lower Shaker Lake Spillway, which is in between North Park and South Park Boulevards, right at Brook Road, which is at the western portion of Lower Lake. We will be there from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. We're planning to be there, um, even if it's a little bit drizzy and a little bit rainy, um, but we will be out there. With that, I would like to introduce you to Cisco Rivera, who is the watershed team leader for both Cleveland Heights, Shaker Heights, and a lot of our other Eastside communities. Um, he's one of three watershed team leaders that we have here at the district. He is uh, the city's key contact for stormwater projects as well as residents contact 
for the Regional Stormwater Management Program. And with that, I'll pass the floor to Cisco and it's all yours. Thank you very much everyone again for joining us this evening. Thanks, Jen. And thank you everyone for joining us for our first public forum on the Lower Shaker Lake Dam Reconstruction Project within the cities of Cleveland Heights and Shaker Heights. As you can see for tonight's agenda, we'll give an overview of the sewer district and our regional stormwater management program. We'll talk about the dam and reasons to reconstruct it. We'll introduce the design team, talk about the project goals and timeline, do a deeper dive into dams and finish with our public engagement efforts for pre-design. So for those of you not familiar with the sewer district, I'm gonna talk about what we do. So the sewer district provides wastewater treatment and stormwater management services across four counties. For the regional stormwater management program, we serve 57 member communities, including the city of Cleveland. The sewer district is an independent political subdivision of the state of Ohio, governed by a seven member board of trustees, three seats appointed by the mayor of Cleveland, three seats elected by the suburban council of Gov governments, and one seat appointed by the Cuyahoga County executive. In total, we service nearly 1 million customers spread across 355 square miles of our service area. The district's regional stormwater management program addresses problems related to stormwater runoff from hard surfaces that drain into larger streams, pipes, and culverts that drain 300 acres or more. This runoff contributes to flooding, erosion, and water quality issues along what we call the regional stormwater system. Through our stormwater master planning, design and construction, inspection and maintenance, and promotion of good practices, we have improved our ability to address problems across, across community boundaries. The Lower Shaker Lake project, which we're talking about tonight, is being funded through the, the regional stormwater management program. And now I'd like to talk about some history of Lower Shaker Lake. So this area was the home of the North Union Shaker community from 1822 to 1889. As part of their commerce and way of life, they dammed Donebrook in 1836 for sawmill and gristmill production, which is milling lumber and grain. The earthen dam, which is mostly made of soil, is currently non-compliant with modern day safety regulations. And that's why we're here today. So Dome Brook, which flows into Lower Lake, is a regional stormwater asset under the district's regional stormwater management program. And this is why the district is here working in collabor collaboration with the cities of Cleveland Heights and Shaker Heights, as well, there, as well as other stakeholders to ensure as a region, we address the issues at the dam. So here are the roles and responsibilities for the partners of this project. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources, ODNR, is responsible for regulating classified dams per the Ohio Revised Code. And the cities of Shaker Heights and Cleveland Heights are responsible for the dam and must comply with these orders. And finally, we, the district, were involved through the Regional Stormwater Program, and we provide stormwater management to Dome Brook. So as I mentioned previously, the Lower Shaker Lake Dam was built in 1836 and is non-compliant with ODNR dam safety regulations. The dam is considered a class one dam because if it were to fail, it would result in a probable loss of life and property damage to the downstream neighborhoods. It currently cannot pass the probable maximum flood, which is defined as the flood that is expected from the most severe combination of critical meteorological and hydrologic conditions that are reasonably possible in a particular drainage area. So we're gonna talk more about this concept in future slides. Additionally, in the sewer district's Chagrin River Lake Erie Direct Tributaries Stormwater Master Plan, it was determined that the dam provides downstream flood control benefit to Coventry Road, North Park Boulevard and University Circle. So as you can see on the map, the Lower Shaker Lake drainage area is 3,121 acres. That means that the area in dark brown all makes its way to Lower Shaker Lake. This includes storm sewers, stormwater runoff, and the multiple branches of Dome Brook that you see on the screen. 
We refer to the branches of Dome Brook as the North Branch, which is at the top there, the middle branch just below it, and the South Branch at the bottom. The North and Middle Branch have a confluence at Horseshoe Lake and then flow as one into Lower Lake. The South Branch flows through Green Lake and Marshall Lake and then meets the North Branch at Lower Shaker Lake. From Lower Lake, Dome Brook flows through University Circle and onto Lake Erie. And now let's meet the project team. So from the district leading this effort is Dennis Saharia, our project manager. Kim Kolich will be providing design oversight to the project. Frank Greenland will handle all of your hard questions as our director of watershed programs and me, the watershed team leader for the cities of Shaker Heights and Cleveland Heights. From HDR, we have Stephen Reedy as our consultant project lead. David Moore will focus on the hydrology and hydraulics. Chad Brintnall from Smith Group serves as our landscape architect and Michelle Johnson will be working with us on stakeholder engagement. So we've taken into consideration ecological, cultural and historical elements of this project. And that will be the primary focus for Jason Early, Andy Sewell, and Dr. Roy Larrick. And rounding it out is Brian Mastin from AECOM who will be working on sediment management. And now I'd like to introduce Stephen Reedy, our consultant from HDR, our project manager from HDR. Stephen is a knowledgeable and respected leader in dam safety and construction. Having successfully delivered over 15 ODNR dam re re regulated dam safety projects, Stephen has over 18 years of experience in water resource management and in his current role with HDR as the dams, levees, and civil work business lead. He is engaged on dam safety projects throughout the country and has worked with numerous federal, state, and regional dam owning agencies. So it is with great pleasure that I hand the presentation over to Stephen Reedy. Great. Thank you, Cisco. I appreciate that. And I really appreciate to be the opportunity to be part of the project team. And I am confident that our team can meet the technical dam safety challenges of this project while also striking a balance with the sensitive park space, as well as the cultural and historical features surrounding the dam. I look forward to telling you a little bit more about the project. But before we do that, we would like to uh, acknowledge and introduce some of our uh, team members uh, to you all. We have DLZ, Smith Group, Bluestone, Resource International, AECOM, Lawhon and Associates, KS Associates, and also NUTEC as part of the project team. They're serving in roles including uh, structural engineering, landscape architecture, project controls, as well as topographic surveying, among others. Our team is comprised of carefully selected partners, which took into consideration the specific needs of the project for identifying technical expertise, as well as sensitivity towards potential community concerns regarding changes to the existing dam facility. Focusing on HDR, HDR is a national leader in dam safety evaluation and rehabilitation designs. Our core roles on this project include dam safety, civil design, geotechnical engineering, and hydrology and hydraulics. HDR technical staff assigned to this project have completed over 50 projects involving rehabilitation of class one, that is high hazard potential, dam facilities. We've left our mark on numerous projects throughout the state of Ohio. And these dam safety projects represent some 261 million in capital improvements to dam and water resource facilities across the state. This sort of expertise really matters because it results in proven dam safety and flood mitigation concepts being carried forward into design and construction. HDR also holds several contracts with the US Army Corps of Engineers and has recently executed over $16 million in dam safety work 
last year. This speaks to the, the depth of technical expertise on the HDR team. Next, just want to introduce you a little bit to a couple of the, the geographically relevant projects that we've worked on. Uh, for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Hargis Lake Dam is a, a large earthen embankment project. Um, it's about 1,500 feet long and 67 feet tall. Um, it impounds about 130 acres. This is a, a class one dam facility. HDR led the design of rehabilitation of features, including a, a new 520 foot long spillway, extension of the lake drain, flattening, and improving the downstream embankment slopes. And we also incorporated 4,000 feet of recreational trails, new paths to fishing piers from parking areas, and established pollinator meadows in the borough area, custom to, to incorporating these sorts of features into our projects. Another project is the Portage Lakes project. Portage Lakes involved a condition assessment of a former fish hatchery site involving ponds, dams, and water transfer infrastructure. And we also developed alternatives for improvements to those facilities. Additionally, we led the investigation of related historic water supply line infrastructure and potential dam safety issues associated with a class one dam. Aspects of our work often involve underwater inspection services. The photo on the next slide shows a diver in North Reservoir attempting to locate a historic water supply line in very challenging conditions. We had heavy vegetation in that particular body of water. And with that, I wanna turn it over to Chad Brittnell with Smith Group to introduce his company and a little bit about Smith Group's experience. Thank you, Stephen. Good evening and all. Smith Group excels in multidisciplinary teams that are working collaboratively to solve complex challenges like we have at Lower Lake. Um, as a subconsultant to HDR, Smith Group has two core responsibilities. The first will be to organize and facilitate public engagement, which we'll speak about uh, on the next slide. But this, the second will be to uh, restore the impacted areas uh, to the as a community asset um, upon completion of the project. Smith Group's approach and the approach that we intend to use here will be to engage the community through a multitude of touch points that we can share with you as part of the project schedule. We'll use those opportunities for feedback Jen noted the first that will be uh, this Saturday, uh, seven, uh, uh, the set, Saturday, October 7th from 10 to 2. But we use that opportunity for feedback uh, to engage with the public. Those subsequently, we use that to kind of evaluate uh, different options, ultimately building consensus solution for the project moving forward. Similar to HDR, Smith Group has a wealth of experience in restoration and cultural landscapes. Um, at Mill Creek in Dexter, Michigan, Smith Group was tasked with uh, recreating the me natural meander of a stream, restoring the riparian habitat along its banks, and incorporating community amenities that allowed for the community's enjoyment of this. This included kind of connecting major uh, uh, length of the to the community's uh, 53 mile long trail system. Working with Toledo Metro Parks, Smith Group was tasked with um, really restoring what was once scorched earth. This was the former central freight yard um, in uh, downtown along Swan Creek, Smith Group restored these landscapes and brought them back to a productive parkland. This is Toledo's first urban metro park. We have a variety of spaces that allow for the community to engage with the Maumee and even found ways to creatively address stormwater coming off of the Anthony Wayne Bridge, running that through a treatment train and providing for uh, clean water emptying into the river. Excellent. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate that. After hearing a bit about the team and some of our relevant experience, we'd now like to dig in a little bit on the overall project goals. 
one of the principal project goals is to address the dam safety deficiencies with the existing dam facility and to bring the dam into compliance with regulations. There are numerous deficiencies with the dam. Among them are a severe spillway capacity deficiency. Additionally, reduced, reducing flood risk downstream of the dam along North Park Boulevard and Coventry Road is also an important objective for us. We know that the dam frequently overtops near the right abutment, and this is a public safety hazard that this project will aim to solve. We also want to restore and stabilize Dome Brook immediately downstream of the dam. And lastly, we want to integrate our dam safety improvements with consideration to historical and cultural features and the surrounding park space. With an understanding of our overall project goals, we'd like to pivot and introduce some general dam nomenclature and tell you a little bit about the Lower Shaker Dam facility itself. Across the country, dam owning agencies own and operate facilities for many different reasons. These could include, among others, drinking water and irrigation, hydroelectric power generation, flood control, and commerce, which would be the case with run of river dams and, and lock and dam systems like on larger rivers like the Ohio. The following slides present an overview of some of the features at the Lower Shaker Lake Dam site. The dam is primarily, primarily excuse me, comprised of an earthen embankment, which is over 600 feet in length. This is represented by the green opaque fill in the graphic here. The overall height of the dam is approximately 17 feet, and this is measured from the crest or the top of the dam to the stream bed or the lowest point along the downstream toe. The dam was constructed in the 1930s, well, below, well before the development of modern day dam safety practices. The dam was constructed with a principal spillway and currently there's no auxiliary spillway at the dam. So now we're going to drill down into a little more detail in some of the different areas of the dam. Box here represents uh, or is focusing in on our, our principal spillway area. Next slide, please. Flows passing over Lower Shaker Lake pass through the masonry spillway. This is the most prominent feature at the dam site. If you visited the park, this is likely a feature that you're familiar with. The spillway is 39 and a half feet uh, long. It's a stone and concrete masonry spillway. And the spillway has a limited, relatively limited capacity to convey flow through the dam system. The earthen embankments in this graphic are shown with that same green opaque hatch or fill in the graphic. And the yellow line represents a uh, lake drain that is used for dewatering of the lake pool for operations and maintenance activities. Flows over the spillway enter into the outlet channel, which is Dome Brook. From here, it flows downstream and travels towards the University Circle area. Next. Next, we want to focus on, on the right embankment. And just a little bit about the nomenclature, right and left refers to the perspective of if you were standing on the dam and you were facing downstream. So in this case, you would be standing on the dam looking west. So the right side would be the side shown here in the, in the box. Next, the earthen embankment on the right side here extends from the principal spillway to North Park Boulevard. Portions of the embankment are quite wide in this area near the crest. And the crest is the top, um, the paved portion where Brook Road is at, some parking is available. There's a low embankment crest elevation near where the embankment crest meets North Park Boulevard. Next slide, please. Next is the left embankment. So this is the portion 
that is between the principal spillway and South Park Boulevard. The embankment in this area has very gradual slopes. Next slide, please. It's not immediately recognizable as a dam or a hydraulic structure. However, during flood events, the emb this embankment section will have to behave as a hydraulic structure, holding back water. Um, as with the right embankment, the crest of the left embankment is also paved. Next. Uh, just touching real briefly on, again, some of the nomenclature, the crest of the dam. Next slide, please. The crest is the highest point of, at the top of the embankment. In this case, it's paved and Brook Road sits atop it. Um, there's parking that is provided up there. Um, and this is the case on both sides of the spillway. Next. The impoundment created by the dam is known as Lower Shaker Lake. This has a surface area of approximately 17 acres. This impoundment creates passive storage, which is below the normal pool level, and also active storage, which, which helps to mitigate downstream flooding concerns during storm events. And lastly, the outlet channel is downstream of the spillway. Flows passing over the spillway enter the outlet channel, which is Dome Brook. From here, they travel downstream across Coventry Road and toward the University Circle area. There's also a stone footbridge that's very prominent if you've visited the park. Uh, it's just downstream of the spillway between the spillway and Coventry Road. Next. Next slide, please. Dams are regulated by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Division of Water Resources, Ohio Dam Safety Program. All regulated, meaning non-exempt dams must meet all ODNR standards. And classification of regulated dams in Ohio is governed by the Ohio Administrative Code. Now we'd like to focus a little bit on some of the specific dam safety challenges that are known at the Lower Shaker Lake Dam site. We've noted there's a severe deficiency in the spillway capacity and the existing spillway capacity is only capable of safely conveying about 2% of the design storm. Frequent overtopping occurs along North Park Boulevard. This problem is a function of that limited spillway capacity. This is a hazardous condition that we seek to rectify as part of the project. We have a video to show you shortly of what this overtopping situation looks like during a larger storm event. We also have an irregular crest elevation. Embankment dams must have a uniform crest elevation. This is important so that we have uniform freeboard, and that term is referred to as the, the height between the normal pool elevation and the crest of the dam. It's also important so that any overtopping flows will not be concentrated in any one area, but spread out over the length of the dam. Additionally, overtopping and stability of the dam embankment is a concern. Overtopping is a condition where the pool level rises in the reservoir above the embankment crest elevation and begins to flow over the embankment. Earthen embankments cannot sustain overtopping flows for a significant period of time. This often results in rapid erosion of the embankment portions being overtopped and can lead to embankment stability challenges and potentially uncontrolled release of the reservoir. Dam regulation and classification. There are generally three criteria for how a dam is, is classified in terms of its potential hazard rating. There, the categories include height, storage, and downstream hazard potential. The highest rank in any one of those three categories will control the over, overall classification of the dam facility. 
Lower Shaker Lake Dam is a class one dam due to the downstream population at risk. If there was a failure of the dam, the potential uncontrolled release of water could move downstream into densely populated areas, causing property damage and possible hazardous conditions downstream, including health and public safety concerns. This is a serious condition and rectifying the dam safety concerns and bringing the dam into compliance with state regulations is the primary driver of the project. The existing spillway capacity is one of the primary deficiencies that are noted. This graph shows us that the existing spillway is capable of passing approximately 425 cubic feet per second. Um, the cubic feet per second is a, is a flow measurement that's used in the industry. Um, it represents one cubic foot 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches for every second passing a point. Most people have heard of the 100 year storm or have heard of a 100 year precipitation event. Um, this is a common hydraulic benchmark for many flood control or water resource projects. The graph shows us the estimated 100 year stream flow value. And we can see how that compares to the existing spillway capacity at the existing dam facility. We can see that the 100 year storm inflow is approximately six and a half times as large as the existing capacity. And just for reference, you know, to give, give you a sense of scale, the 100 year precipitation is approximately five inches of precip within the watershed. And lastly, because this dam is a class one dam, the design storm that the dam must be able to pass is called the probable maximum flood or the PMF. The PMF is a high design standard. Ohio's regulations and adopting the PMF for high hazard potential structures is consistent with other dam owning and federal agencies as well as best practices uh, used with other state dam safety programs around the country. The potential safety hazard posed by the downstream population, or posed to, excuse me, the downstream population, is the primary reason for this high standard. While we don't yet know the particular details, modifications to the dam facility to safely convey the PMF will likely be accomplished through a combination of spillway and embankment modifications. Next. So this graph shows us the relative difference in the maximum inflow for the design storm or the PMF all the way to the right. So you can see that we have a, a pretty large deficiency in the existing spillway. This slide shows us a video of an overtopping event at Lower Shaker Lake. This is from a little over two years ago in July of 2021. The overtopping is occurring at the right abutment where the embankment meets North Park Boulevard. The flow is to the west toward Coventry Road and any overtopping of an earthen embankment is a serious concern. This could lead to erosion, stability issues or uncontrolled breach of the embankment. Because of the potential consequences of failure associated with a class one dam, in particular, the public safety aspect of it, that is why there's such a high hydraulic design standard that is required here. And it also bears noting that this is but one of the concerns at the dam. Other issues must, must also be addressed in order to bring the dam into compliance with state regulations. Next. Now we wanna to touch a little bit on schedule and, and let you guys know where we're at um, in terms of the overall design process. We have two time scales here. The, the upper time scale shows the longer view that, that contains the pre-design, detailed design and construction and close out phases of the project. Uh, we're we are very early on in pre-design 
the lower time scale kind of shows in a little more detail what all is included in the pre-design process. Many of our disciplines have, have really just begun uh, their work of looking at the existing condition assessment. Um, and we, are, we have wrapped up most of our field surveys and data collection activities to this point. Next. We're, although we're fairly early in the process, we wanted to take a few minutes to share with you just a bit of what our team has been doing as part of the survey and data collection activities. If you were at the, at the park or near the project site here recently, you've, you've likely seen uh, some of our crews out performing some different services. And those would include a topographic survey, a structural inspection, uh, geotechnical exploration. Uh, that was probably particularly hard to miss with the, the large drill rig on site. Um, tree survey, uh, fish relocation efforts, and sediment sampling, among others. Next, we'll touch briefly on the, the fish relocation. Uh, the lake was lowered just after Labor Day in order to help us facilitate structural inspection of the existing spillway. As part of those operations, the district, district was able to perform electrofishing and relocation of native fish species that would have been potentially stressed by the lower lake level. Over 2,500 fish were relocated as part of this effort, including green, green sunfish, as well as largemouth, excuse me, largemouth bass and other sunfish species. Next. We also performed geotechnical explorations out at the site. And the objective was to obtain soil and rock samples from, from the site. And those will be subjected to laboratory testing in order to help our engineers characterize the foundation and embankment soils and rock. Um, these will subsequently be used in slope stability and seepage analyses. Uh, we have photos of the Berea sandstone shown here in this photograph. And I, if you're coming out to our on-site meeting on Saturday, I also have some samples that I'll be bringing with me. So we can actually put our hands on it and have a discussion about it. Additionally, the project team conducted a tree inventory survey for the project area. Survey noted the diameter, species, general health, and whether the particular tree was considered native or invasive. The project team will use this information to better understand the potential impacts of the considered dam safety alternatives. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jen so she can tell you a bit more about public engagement. Thank you very much, Stephen. As I mentioned earlier, we do plan to be out at Lower Shaker Lake uh, this Saturday, October 7th. Um, but that's not the first time that we've started some public engagement as it pertains to this specific project. Um, earlier this year, we were out at Donebrook Watershed Partnerships Take to the Lake event where tons of uh, people were able to enjoy the lake and kayak and, and paddleboard. But we will also be this weekend, we will be at the Shaker Heights Historical Society's Apple Fest, as well as the Nature Center at Shaker Lake's Autumn Fest. Um, Apple Fest is at the Historical Society um, from noon until four, and Autumn Fest is at the Nature Center from four until seven. Um, we will, so as I mentioned before, we will be at the Lower Shaker Lake Spillway. We will be between North Park and South Park Boulevards along um, Brook Road, which is the north-south connectivity at the western end of Lower Lake. Um, in the event we do have torrential rain, I will have signs posted on both the Shaker Heights and Cleveland Heights side of the spillway. Um, we do have a rain location secured at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, which is just a little bit north at 2747 Fairmount Boulevard in Cleveland Heights. So what can you expect when you come out and you meet with us on Saturday the 7th? Um, definitely you have a chance to meet a lot of our team members in person, um, ask us some questions, 
But most importantly, um, we want to know about you. We want you to um, give us some information. Like, what are your favorite memories of Lower Lake? Um, where do you live? What's your zip code? Um, how do you get to the park? So that as we design this project, we can take a lot of those things into consideration with some of the um, connectivity and landscape architecture um, components. Um, we will also have three of our community partners out there. We will have um, the Friends of Lower Lake will have a tent, as will the Donebrook Watershed Partnership and the Nature Center at Shaker Lakes. And I do know that there were some questions um, that were added in the Q&A. Um, some of my team members here at the district and I are working on answering those for you. Um, but we do have an opportunity to answer some questions live as well. Um, just to remind everybody, um, this Zoom was being recorded, but you can uh, view a copy of this Zoom webinar. Um, we'll probably post it tomorrow morning, but neorsd.org slash Lower Lake is our landing page for all things Lower Shaker Lake Dam Reconstruction Project related. And with that, I'll open it up um, to the Q&A. And let's see, what do we have? So if my main panelists, if you want to turn your cameras back on. Um, and I think I have a question. Um, part of the question we can answer, um, but the second part we probably can't. And I think this is a question that's best for Dr. Larrick. And we have a question about um, this, the area between Brook Road and Coventry Road. Um, and the, the question is that there is a heavily wooded area between Brook Road and Coventry Road. And the ap area appears to have remnants of the old mill. I'm wondering if you can provide us with a little bit more information about that site. And then the second part of the question, um, I will um, answer in the chat. But Dr. Larrick, maybe a little history for us today. Yes, thank you for the question. There are in that area, a number of historical assets and the dam, excuse me, the uh, Shaker sawmill remains are the most important. And uh, the sawmill, as uh, was said, the dam, and the sawmill date to 1836. The sawmill operated for a couple of decades, but it became outmoded with steam power and it was more efficient to mill lumber other places. So it shut down and it became a uh, cooper shop for uh, several years. And then everything was closed down by about 1870. Uh, there was on top of the foundations that exist, some wooden structures which we have uh, drawings and photographs of. And uh, there were, um, it, in any event, it's all been reduced to the stone foundation itself. And even that was modified during the 1920s by various interests. So we have this interesting combination of mill that sits low down at the foot of the dam. And it's, it's nearly buried between the backside of the dam and the, what I call the Coventry Causeway, the uplifted area upon which Coventry flows north and south now. So that is the most important resource. We are still surveying it. And of course, we know nothing yet about what the project entails, but it likely doesn't go into that area. In any event, uh, we, uh, we don't expect change in that area. Thank you very much, Dr. Larrick. And I do have um, a couple of questions in here that I'm actually gonna pass to, to Frank Greenland, if he doesn't mind. Um, they are related to, um, it's sort of a, the same question being asked twice. So the question is, um, how likely is it that we will have a 100 year storm event before the new dam gets built? And then also a part two to that from a second person is, um, will the 100 year storm estimates increase due to climate change? Well, how likely is a 100 year storm? It's 1%, right, in any given year. 1% chance that that could happen. And we tend to see that a lot. We talk about 100 year storms a lot. The reason is they tend to happen more localized, not as you know, pervasive across the entire area. So we get these little pocket thunderstorms and you can get a storm in a small area of a hundred year frequency or return in. So it's roughly 1% chance at any given year. Will the hundred year storm 
Freak, what was the second question? Will it rise? The second is, um, will um, will the, I'll say the definition of a 100 year storm change due to climate change? I'll rephrase it that way, maybe. NOAA is updating what they call Atlas, what is it, Atlas 14? I think it's gonna be called Atlas 15, maybe. I don't know what they're gonna call it, but I know they're under contract to update rainfall statistics. Uh, the Atlas 14 estimates for 100 year, 25 year, 10 are old, older, let's say. And certainly weather patterns are changing. We're seeing it here with more annual precipitation and, and more spiky rainfall events of high intensity. So there will be a republishment of the, um, the design storm intervals and amounts. And I don't know exactly when that's coming. In the next few years, we'll see that. We at the district are doing our best to keep track of climate change, the precipitation change patterns, and we have a pretty robust rainfall measurement system. We couple that with Doppler radar. We know what's going on uh, across the area and we continue to watch that. We're heavily engaged in the Water Research Foundation's climate change research. Uh, and, and we wanna understand it so that as we make decisions and build facilities going forward, we're thinking hard about what can we do to increase our res resiliency. Thank you very much, Frank. And I actually do have another question for Dr. Larrick. It's maybe another history lesson for us, if you don't mind. Um, um, I had somebody, for starters, they said you're a little bit hard to hear. So if you can be a little bit louder for me, that would be wonderful. But secondly, they would like to know um, if you know about the Shaker Lakes Garden Club's former wildflower garden and benches that used to be at the site. Yes, the, uh, the wildflower garden was a product of the early 1920s. And it was a collaboration between the city of Cleveland and uh, the garden clubs, more than one garden club. And the plantings appear to have been done in 1921 and uh, updated just a little bit. They were in that triangular area, nearly from the north end uh, down to the brook area, the current brook area. And so it's an area that has been reforested on its own. Uh, so the planting, some of the plantings are still there, but they are, let's say, in disarray. And uh, we, um, Friends of Lower Lake, have documented what can be done in that area. So I have gotten my information uh, from the Friends. And uh, the, um, once again, we don't know exactly what the project area will be. But at this point, there doesn't seem to be any worry about damaging that area that's already been uh, kind of devastated. You know, once these historical projects, um, gardens especially, once they are put in place, they're subject to poor maintenance, shall we say. Nobody wants to take responsibility for them. So the plantings that are there, both the wildflower garden and to the north, right at the apex of the triangle near North Park and Brook Road, uh, they have um, more or less disintegrated over the years. It's very difficult to see much of them, uh, more easily seen once leaf fall. Uh, so we will be back to survey those once the leaves are off and try to get a better understanding of the old plantings, Wildflower Garden and Shaker Memorial Gardens from the apex at North Park down to the brook. Thank you again, Dr. Larrick. And I do have um, a question that I'm gonna to pass to Stephen if he doesn't mind. Um, there are two questions that go, um, they don't go hand in hand, but they're, they're both coming your way. So I'll let you answer both at the same time. Um, Somebody would like to know uh, what factors are used in determining that a dam is life-threatening and would therefore be classified as a class one. And um, the question is where, um, where specifically would these factors be most critical? And then the second question is, are you planning to take out the dam and put in a new dam? All right. Excuse me, back on now. 
So the factors used in determining life threatening um, is a specific modeling product that the state of Ohio and and other dam agencies around the country have you do. It's it's create a set of inundation maps. So you do modeling of the dam facility and you have a certain breach that is assumed. You look at the terrain downstream and get an understanding of the population at risk, uh, the structures that are downstream, and also other critical uh, infrastructure like transportation assets. Um, so it really has to do with uh, whether or not structures, um, habitable structures are being inundated um, by a, a potential flood wave if there was a, a breach. And what was the second part of that? The we're second question um, from somebody else was if we're planning to remove the existing dam and replace it with a new one. So we're early on in, in the project right now and we're in kind of the data collection and exploration phase. And we don't know yet where we're going to go, whether we can rehabilitate uh, the existing dam facility or whether or not um, it makes sense to perhaps construct or re remove and reconstruct or construct maybe adjacent to the existing dam. Um, those answers will come later after, after the initial condition assessment work is done and we develop a, a number of different options to be considered. Um, so we won't know the answer to that until much later on in the process. Thank you, Stephen. Sorry, everyone. I'm answering a question and listening to an answer at the same time. Yeah, no time. problem. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, and then um, I have a question for possibly Matt, if you wouldn't mind chiming in for this one. Um, somebody would like some more details about the emergency action plan um, that um, we answered in a prior question as far as um, dam safety and things like that. I'm wondering if you, you or Dennis could give a little bit of additional context to what that includes. Sure, Jen. So as we mentioned in the Q&A, the, the, uh, the cities of Shaker Heights and, and Cleveland Heights are required by the state of Ohio, you know, Ohio Natural uh, Department of Natural Resources dam safety program to put together what's called an emergency action plan. And essentially that's a plan that in, in case of uh, any issues with the dam, that first and foremost, the dam is being routinely inspected, um, particularly after storm events um, by the communities and that the communities themselves, their administration, as well as their safety forces are aware of um, actions that need to be taken if there's anything that's leading to um, issues with the dam's uh, function. So that those are, that is in place. Um, it's also coordinated with the district, uh, the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, uh, and in this case also with the City of Cleveland. So that plan is in place, and accompanying that emergency action plan is an operation inspection and maintenance plan. Again, that speaks to the frequency of inspection that's required by the state to operate such a, a dam as a Class One dam. Uh, so those two uh, pieces of information or plans go hand in hand to make sure that uh, in this interim period between uh, pre-design, design into construction, uh, we've got plans in place if there are any issues to occur. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, that was the last question that we had in the Q&A chat there uh, for the person who um, had the last one about the garden club, um, that answer was posted in the answered section. So with that, I want to once again, thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you have a, a question that still comes up, um, please send us an email. Our customer service email address is askus at neorsd.org. All of those questions go to our customer service department and they are routed to the appropriate staff member and we will definitely work to answer any questions that you may have. Um, in addition, I also hope to see all of you um, out at the uh, Lo Lower Shaker Lake Spillway this weekend, October 7th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Pretty much rain or shine unless there's thunder and lightning and then we'll move indoors. But other than that, please come out, ask questions, give us some input. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear about how you use the park, how you engage with uh, 
the site, things like that. If you're able to um, not make it there, you can also catch us at Apple Fest as well as Autumn Fest. And we will hopefully see you all this weekend. Thank you once again for joining us. If you'd like to see a copy of this webinar, you can go to neorsd.org slash lower lake. And that is our landing page for all things this project related. Thank you once again. Good night, everybody.